Yo, baby, come here and let me give you some kisses. Oh, wait, this isn't that type of thing. Sorry, I'm, I apologize. This is a game, actually, nothing to do with kissing babies, called The Children of Bryn. I don't know what it's about, but it has kitties in it, so I'm going to play it. And it's, oh, my God. It's a point-and-click adventure game that has lots of kitties, apparently. Actually, there's nothing that promised me lots and lots of kitties. I just saw one on the icon, so I assume that an icon is going to have, you know, eventually some sort of cat. Also, look at this crazy arrowhead for my pointer. That's crazy. This is Newgrounds game, of course. Yes, always. Oh, and Lordstrom. This should be fantastic. They make good point and clicks. Hopefully, there's lots of kittens. These are members of your party, so your sole purpose is to keep them alive on the quest. <laughs> oh, no, they're all going to die. Oh, God. Oh, no. Information will be presented here. Your options and choices will be here. Click them to move on with the story. Your party prepares to set out for their latest charge. They are the children of Bryn, and they have been hired by a small village to the south called Dela. Dela. The village's primary export and the backbone of their local economy is wine. Their vineyards are under siege by an unnatural threat. They want the children to stop it, because the adults are too hammered. The children of Bryn are a mercenary band, out of Ashbane. They're a mixed lot, and anyone who can hold their own in combat can join their ranks. They function as a guild, and have some political support within the city. The jobs they take are primarily honest ones, escorting prisoners, bodyguarding important figures, and so on, but sometimes the ends justify the means, and this doesn't always make everyone happy. Ooh. First, from the order to join your band is Neville Grimson. He was a simple farm boy from Camilla, turned warrior after moving south and working the docks a bit. He signed on with several sellsword bands in his youth, but quickly learned to pick better companions. He has been with the children for three years, and is a long ways from his home in the mountains. He's obviously a warrior. He's got a hammer made of wood. It's like a log attached to, like, an axe handle. Just take the axe, seriously. Linka is a Lamoran mage from the Shade Forest. She served two years as a battle mage with her husband. One night he died in a skirmish, and she, just, and she decided to retire regardless of her young age. She spent many years wandering the world, only to recently settle... And only recently settled in Ashbane. That was my fault. Looking for work, she's recently joined up, and while still green, to the children. She has experience in war. Pentergast was a small-time crook for most of his youth. However, he finally got caught, and was about to be sent to the mines when one of the children spoke for him and said they'd like to give him a second chance. He's been a member ever since. Does he have his use... He does have his useful talents, disarming traps, unlocking doors, chests, and lightning pockets. He's, of course, not supposed to do any of this anymore, unless directed to do so by a superior. Trickfoot has been a child of brain for 15 years. He's a kitty! Oh my god, he's a fucking killer! He saved countless lives and has been on even more adventures. He suffers from an insatiable, insatiable thirst for adventure and says he will die on the road or that he'll never die at all. He is skilled in healing magic and has proven himself a most valuable comrade. You're lucky that he has chosen your party. Oh my god, he has a skill. He has a skill right there. This is Trickfoot's familiar. He's a beholder. Beholders can scout out things from the air. Oh my god! He's a kitty! He's my favorite. Trickfoot's my favorite. Fantastic, let us go. Your party sets out leaving Bryn Hall behind. Their bags are packed and their horses are loaded. The first steps of their journey lay right before them. Will is looking off in the distance, however. When asked about it, he points to a small tavern on the edge of town. He says, Hey, we're going to be traveling for days and days. Let's grab a mug before we go. Oh no. It's a it choose your own adventure game, not a point and click. God damn it, why would you make this a fucking Hang on. Well it can't to hurt have everyone for the road. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do all the adventure. They all enter the seven tankard lodge and find a booth off to the side. Above a dancer in red silk shakes her hips, and on the st on the stage into a side I can't do this plucks away at his loot. A loud game of dwarven poker being played not far from where the party all sits, yet no dwarves are seated at the game. Will speaks up to the waitress. I'll have a pale ale, and one for each of my friends. Yes, yes, an ale for everyone. Oh no! Will Pentagast slurps his ale eagerly and elbows Linker with a wink. 
She grumbles and shoots him a patronizing smile. Trickfoot leans over his ale and stares down at the swirling froth. I do believe we should be using our time here. Let us quickly finish these drinks and make haste. We have an important job to help the vineyards. I do not believe. Whoops. I'm going to come down. Let's relax. No, no. Finish one mug, then back to the job. The four dust themselves off and mount upon their horses. Nebel looks to the other three. Let's ride. Wait, no. Nebel. Let's ride! <laughs> Sorry. They head out of Ashbane and down the old road to Dilar. Good lord. They ride for several days until they come to a wagon parked in the road. There is no draft animal under the wagon's yoke, and it is covered in white canvas. Nebel holds up his hand for everyone to stop and whispers, I've seen this before. It is a trap. Nebel eases his horse ahead a few steps and draws his hammer. Tell them to come out of the wagon, or else get your fucking bitch asses out of the fucking wagon! That yoke is not your size! Nebel holds up a hand and yells, Whoever is in the wagon, step out now! I don't know why I gave him such a voice. It's ridiculous. He looks back to the other three to make sure they're ready. They nod. After a bit, though no one steps out, he holds up his hand again. This is your final warning, or we set fire to the wagon with you in it. <laughs> Wait! A woman's voice screams from inside. A woman and a man step up from the back of the wagon. The man holds a dagger to the woman's throat. He yells, Drop your weapons or I'll kill the woman! He's clearly a bandit, plans to use this woman as a hostage, as a sausage, a sausage so he can rob your party. Lenka, hit him with an acid bolt. <laughs> Nebel does, he says, get close and take him down. Why would you hit him with an acid bolt? There's a woman! God damn. <laughs> oh my god. Nebel and Will drop their weapons to the ground. The bandit grins and two more jump out of the back of the wagon. Whack wagon. One of them trains his crossbow on Nebel. The other two draw short swords. No one needs to... Wait, no. Here we go. No one needs to die. Just give us your supplies and your horses and you can walk home. The leader releases the woman and reaches for Nebel's horse. There you go. Nebel quickly strikes the man in the throat with an open hand. <laughs> Fucking bitch. He's dead. The bandit with the crossbow releases his bolt, but it misses Nebel. Linka fires an acid bolt that downs the third bandit. Nebel and Will close in on the one remaining bandit that carries the crossbow and dispatch him quickly. The woman is okay, and as is each member of the party. Thank God. Good. The woman informs the group that she was on her way to Ashbane when four bandits jumped her. The fourth stole her horse, and the rest set up this ambush. She's thanked the party and continues her, her way to Ashbane. We're big damn heroes. Onward in. The party continues and on and eventually reach the town of township of Delar. The village meets them and escorts them to the town towards the vineyard. The village elder. Oh, I thought this said the village. The whole thing. Just like all the buildings gather around. To oh, this is our vineyard, by the way. Sorry. We are all very happy that you have arrived. An evil, pl an evil has plagued our town for some time now. The elder speaks and waves his hands, as if that somehow better illustrates his frustration with the village's problem. Nebel kindly nods and continues to listen. Why is he s Oh, Nebel. That's Nebel. This is Will. What am I doing? I am so confused. Okay. What? What? Okay. Nebel is this one. Will is this one. Will sounds like this. Nebel sounds like this. Linka sounds retarded somehow. I don't know. And Trickfoot says, Wee, wee, who down here you are? Nebel kindly nods and continues to listen. The elder continues. Our grapevines are being consumed at an alarming rate. Giant cave locusts attack every morning. They darken the sky. There are so many. We've never seen such a number before. He leads the party to the vineyards, and they are indeed our bear. He points to several dead locusts on the ground. Some are almost as big as a house cat, almost as big as Trickfoot. We've had them before. Every vineyard does, but so many. And then this man shows himself, and demands we pay him or they will never stop coming. The elder stops for a moment to catch his breath. He's clearly worked up. Trickfoot smacks him in the face. No. The elder swallows and then continues. We ran him out of town, and one of our boys followed him to a cave to the east. He is living there, and we think that is where he's casting his magic from. We would pay you to stop him rather than pay his ransom. Neville nods. We can do that. Linka speaks up. I have never heard of this kind of magic, though. 
Ha! <laughs> the elder nods. No, I. But wherever he's doing, the locusts must be coming from that cave. And why else would he return to them? Trickfoot pats the elders back. We will look into this and return with news. You did well choosing us. You and your family and friends can rest easy. We will return shortly. Thank God. The elder seems comforted by this and waves all of the villagers back to town. They leave the party standing there facing east. Neville takes a deep breath. All right, to the cave in the east, I suppose. Hi. Yeah, I need video. The party quietly explores the forest, looking for the entrance to the cave. When they find it, they see it is marked with two small torches. Well, someone is living in there, and they're not even trying to hide it, whispers Will. <laughs> Trickfoot adds, The cave could be massive or tiny, and I bet there is just the one entrance. My roommate's doing stuff. Give me a second. He's making food, I think. He did something to his back. It's fine. We can wait. Just wait here real quick. I think I grab a torch. It'll be dark in time. Cause you're such a harm. Thank you. With your blue body and your purpleness, you're obviously some sort of alien horror. Taken many times by Mr. Shatner. Nom nom nom. I'm just waiting. <laughs> waiting very, very quietly. Hoping nothing bad happens. He's waiting. He's grabbing the sodas. I don't get one. He's going to drink them both. Drops thing. He's dropping shit. He's back waving something. It's it's fine. Well, from what I can tell, Will has a weird hat. And he has armor on, I think. And he has a log attached to the axe thing. And Linka is blue skin beige. With, like, purple shit. And she has a big old glove that obviously doesn't fit her hand at all. Yeah, obviously. It was uh, purple. Hmm, <laughs> Will is like rogue, obviously. With his two stabby things. What? What? <laughs> Nothing? And shoulder pad. Look at that shoulder pad. It's really shoulder pad. He only has one. And a cape. What's a cape for? I don't know. Shoulder pad? No idea. He has pants. Look at those pants. And then we come to my favorite. We have two tr tr trick foot. Look at that guy. His fucking hat. I wish we could. I bet you wish we could go on, but we can't. It's impossible. The sounds like that one. <laughs> He's got a big old club. He's gonna kill you. He's, he has it raised above his head as if to strike you down. Look at that shit. <laughs> and he's got medals and shit. Oh my god. And a hat. Cute little kitty hat. He's such a fucking kitty. <laughs> he is totally my favorite. Oh my god. I'm freaking out. And he has this little familiar that I don't understand. It is a beholder, but I can't actually see it because it's too tiny. It appears to have four little legs and eye and wings. It's fucking adorable. And now we have gone through all of their closing choices. Thank you for watching this edition of, um, clothing, the children of Bryn. Clothing edition something something. Haute couture. In, um... In is is this in general just that you know that that's it this is what they wear everyone wears adventuring clothes it's kind of like a uh, world of everything craft because you know you got you got like these guys you got like the dark elves over here then you got the humans except that you got these guys which come from like what the hell's that from oh god what's guild wars I think he looks like a guild wars little weird <laughs> yes, yes, thing. I don't know what they're called. They're tiny. They cast spells or some shit. And they also lay, lay traps like little assholes, I think. We're telling this bitch right here to uh, grab a torch. Miss Dark Elf, with your... She probably doesn't even need a torch. She'd just use her glove of power. And all as well. It's fantastic. I wonder how long I can just go on for. Probably days. You know what this? I think he can make steak. The stab steak and turn that shit over. And, you know. You make big steak. Delicious. You know, pepper that shit. Put some spices on. Try to get that shit medium rare. 
or however you like it, like rare is uh, bloody, but medium rare is not quite as, but still pink. You got like medium well and then like well. It's like, ooh, this is so good. This steak is nice. I love it. And I'm not continuing until you're gone. <laughs> huh? Because I read this out loud. Okay. I'm embarrassed now. How dare you? What? Reading out loud. I think. In front of people. Maybe. Sort of. My silly internet thing and I can feel embarrassed if I want to. So now we wait. Still waiting, you know. With the Nebel Grimson Linka Will Pentagast, which is a ridiculous name. It's like a pentagram and a ghost. It's like, oh, look at me. I'm a I'm a rogue, and my name is so indicative of my inability to my in, my ability to be unseen or my inability to be seen. Were it that I were hiding in such a way that would make it so that nobody could see me, because I'm a rogue. Also, I stole shit whenever I was a little boy, and I also have this hat made of belts, belt hat. I'm looking at this belt hat, and I'm just noticing that it is very much like a belt, like a bunch of belts, or is a mummy. He's like a sixteenth mummy on his mother's side, and that's his hat. Or his, like his his brain is mummified. Like take off the wrappings, and there's his dusty brain. That's why he sounds so dumb. It's because he has zombie brain grossness. It's fantastic. It's uh, wish I could pause this. Can't. Wish I could. You know. Oh God, why is it doing that? No, I wish I could. Uh, you know, edit, but I but I can't. Nope. Just gonna talk like this for a while. Rambling. Rambling on. Forever and ever. Maybe until the end of time. That's a lot of time. Just just saying. Oh wow. Um, yeah, this is one entrance. Um What live in the kitchen? He's still in the kitchen eating. He's eating food in the kitchen. Oh my god. Now I wonder whenever I can get the more stuff. So far, only Trickfoot has something, and I want to get Will and Linka something. <coughs> Linka, grab a torch. It will be dark inside. Linka pulls one of the torches free from the cliffside next to the narrow entrance of the cavern. She holds it up so that everyone can see as you enter the cave. And as we have said before, I needed to get something. There. There we go. Okay. Will? No. Wait. Ah, uh, what if there's a trap? What if there's a person? Oh, she has the torch, though. Oh, God, why? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. In case there's traps, I guess. Will, I hate you. Will takes the lead and asks that Linka walk directly behind him with the torch overhead. The party pushes through the narrow cavern until it opens up into a larger room. Will quickly grabs Linka's arm and stops her. He then motions to the floor. On the floor grows a carpet of small green mushrooms. Oh my god, Will actually knew. He knew, yes! I'm so good at this game, but not really. Shriekers! Oh uh, no. Shriekers! Will whispers to the others, Follow me around them! He leads the party around them. Whoever lives in this cavern must have planted them there as a kind of alarm system. Shrieking mushrooms for seriousness? That's fucking terrifying! Oh no. In the next room, the sound of a crackling fire and lizard and chatter can be heard. They speak in hissing sounds, followed by deep throat clicking. They must be thirteen or fourteen of them. Will waves, er Will waves everyone down and he crawls behind a stalagmite. He then quickly takes a look. They're gathered around a fire and they're armed with pole arms. Oh my god! If they go into a phalanx position, we're fucked. We're sneaking past them. That's bullshit. <laughs> it's like, oh, phalanx, fuck you! The party crawls on all fours until they pass the lizard men. Lizard men. They crawl through a second room with two prison boxes in it and two more lizard guards with shields and swords. Then they head down a narrow hall and into a room filled with crates and weapon racks. There are a few barrels and a large heavy door with metal rivets in it. Will motions toward the door and then quickly pads over to it. Will leans into the door and listens for a bit. He then whispers... There is a large lizard dragonkin. There is a dragonkin on the other side. A guard. We'll have to take him out. 
Apple nods. All right, we will ambush him and kill him as quickly as possible. Will begins to remove the exposed hinges from the door and waits for the others to prepare themselves. Will pulls the final pin and leaps back. The door falls as a giant dragonkin lizard man turns suddenly. He's surprised. He grabs his two-handed axe, but is too slow. Trickfoot's blinding spell hits him, and he stumbles back. Nubble starts hammering him over and over, trying to find a weakness. Linka blasts him with a bolt, and a few bolts of acid. Good lord! Be careful, you bitch! Nubble is standing right there! Eventually, the group wears the blind lizard down. Really? Does it wear him down? Just like, ah! Uh. He's now... He looks like a stalagmite. He's gross. The lizard man lays there now, dead. Nebel checks his throat for a pulse and gives Will a nod. Will leads on into the next room, which is filled with large locusts on the walls, the ceiling, everywhere. This is where they breed. At the back of the room there is a polished door with a fine handle. This must be where the leader lives. Will picks the lock and cases the door open quietly. Eases. That says, oh my god, the font. The man, clearly the mastermind by the nice room and his clothing, sits at his desk writing. A large curved sword rests next to him. Will turns to Nebel for the go-ahead. Nebel nods. Yes. Will sneaks in smoothly and cuts the man's throat. He wipes his hand on the man's shirt and moves back to Nebel's side. Oh my god! I killed a man! That was messy work, but you did well. Nebel whispers to Will. Will smiles a thank you to him. Now lead us out of here! <laughs> Linka adds, looking at Will while smiling herself. Will gives them both a nod, then leads them back out. Victory! You have succeeded. Your score is 68. Out of a possible what? Out of a possible what? That was gay. Major decision. Oh, wow, that was my last major decision? Oh, well, I guess I did a really good job. I just, like, went straight through, I guess. Did I have another one for the road? Hail for everyone! Oh, drink! Now, Mulligan says better judgment, orders a second round of drinks. We'll cheers when the mugs arrive. As they all relax and sip them, they all notice the dwarven game is getting a bit rowdy. Some of the players begin yelling at each other, and one of them throws a handful of cards in another. Linka whispers, Are all the taverns in the human kingdom this rowdy? Will whispers back, only the good ones. <laughs> Will, go tell those ruffians to quiet down. They're bothering our lady. Will saunters over to the four men and holds out a hand bravely. The lady wishes you all to remain silent for the remainder of our stay. Please show a little respect for the more fair sex. Linka looks to Nebel. <laughs> <laughs> I never said that. Nebel shrugs. One of the men throws a punch at Will. Bar fight! Get them! <laughs> oh god, he's stunned. He's stunned! Will ducks the punch, but a second man catches him in the temple with a leather sap. Will falls to the floor with a thud. Trickfoot leaps from his chair and lands squarely into the center of your table. He then starts to cast a spell. His beholder squeaks and darts out of a window. Linka looks a bit shaken, unfamiliar with this kind of environment, but she moves in behind Double to offer him help. Turk them out, goddammit! One of the men presents a knife and puts it to Will's throat. I'll cut him, I will. Like I care about him. Nebel, kill them! Everyone take it slow. No sudden movements. Linka acid balls his face! <laughs> <laughs> Linka waves her hands and sends a magical bolt of acid flying. It hits the armed man in the face and he screams! He flings Will to the floor and drops his blade to the ground. Will's head hits the corner of a stool with a loud pop. God damn it, Will! <laughs> you suck! Oh no, he got injured. This is bad. The other men engage, and Neville f charges forth, smashing into them. He pulls off his helmet and crushes the first man's face, even though the second one stabs him under his right arm with a stick knife. Trickfoot casts a spell, and a ball of bright light flashes and hits one of the drunken men. The man falls backwards and collapses to the floor, dead asleep. <laughs> oh my god, Will died, and Neville is arrested. <laughs> Oh no, oh god damn it, I skipped that shit. Oh god. Trickfoot shakes his head. That went terrible. Now what do we do? I knew we shouldn't have gone in there. No, sorry, I, I used the wrong voice. Linka frowns. I guess we continue with our assignment? Trickfoot's pet beholder flaps back and perches on his shoulder. Yes, we have a job. Continue. With only two mages. <laughs> the remaining two members of your party pack their things and leave the city. 
They travel down the cobblestone path to the south. They're all used by many travelers and traders. It's daunting. Having not even left the city yet, and already had bad luck has befallen your heroes. But they push on. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. The road to Dila is long but straight one. The two travel for two days until they encounter a wagon on the third day. The wagon is parked, and no horse or ox appears to be under its yoke. Send them all to check it out. Oh, God. The little beholder flies over and peeks over the top of the wagon. He looks behind it and even under it. He flutters up to the front and peeks inside and then shrieks. The beholder flies away to hide in the nearby woods. It's a trap. Run for it. Wounded. <laughs> God damn it. As the companions urge their horses into a run, men pile out of the back of the wagon. One of them fires a bolt from his crossbow that grazes Linka's arm, but she keeps riding. After several minutes, the men are out of sight. When that horse is of their own, you are on the move. They will never catch up. They will never catch up, that's fine. Stop and heal Linka's arm. They really got me, those bastards! Linka says, as she holds out her arm for Trickfoot to clean. The two rest by the road for a few moments while carefully wraps her wound. As they sit, one of the horses makes a nervous sound. When Trickfoot looks up, the crossbow bolt hits him in the throat, and he gasps for air. The bandits did follow and caught up. They shouldn't have stopped to rest. Trickfoot died in the throat! God damn it! <laughs> this is the worst thing. My kitty friend! God, why? Then <laughs> leaks, uh, leaks up, leaps up, and flings an acid bolt from her fingers at the attackers. It misses them that splatters nearby and mists them with burning acid droplets. They scream and pat their wounds wildly. Trickfoot falls dead to the ground, and Linka flees, leaving her friend behind. She slides down a bank into the forest's edge. She breathes hard and waits quietly to see if they follow. They do not. Head deeper into the forest so they do not. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Linka travels deeper into the forest, and the bandits do not follow. It seems they primarily wanted the horses and supplies, and they were willing to kill for it. She stops by a small brook to get a drink and decide her next plan of action. Damn bandits on such a well-traveled road. Who would have guessed? She thinks to herself. Oh no. There is a rustle in the trees overhead. She looks up only to see a frightened beholder flutter down to her shoulder. It is Trickfoot's companion, and he seems very sad. Do you know what happened, little guy? She whispers to him as he nuzzles up to her neck and cries. I love his one big blue sad eye. Move on, head on to Delara's plan. Linka finishes the... God. Linka finishes the... Oh, God, no. Linka finishes the voyage to Delara alone. She had no food and had to scavenge for sustenance along the way. Without a horse to ride, she was late and very exhausted. The village elder comes out to meet her. What is going on here? Why is it just you? He asks. His voice is clearly angry. Oh, no. We were attacked by bandits on the road. My companions, they were slain. Linka stops talking for a moment and tries to recompose herself. Oh, no. Linka stops talking for a moment and tries to recompose herself. This is unacceptable! First, the council refuses to send us aid, so we hire mercenaries, and then they can't even survive the roads? This is nonsense! No traders that travel that road sometimes. How can we expect you to solve our problem if you can't even solve your own? The elder waves his hands wildly as he shouts. This will not do. I'm sorry, but we will not pay you. We will give you food and water, and you can return to your home. The elder waves Linka away and returns to his hut. The party has failed their mission. Fuck balls. I didn't even save, did I? Nope. Well, let's go to here. Go here. Go here. Go here. Go here. Go here. Okay. And we're with this. No sudden movements. No sudden movements. Nebulus has his hammer down and tries to talk to the drunkards down. While doing this, Trickfoot continues bumbling his spell until it is prepared. Will starts to stir. He is waking up. Yeah, he's healthy. What? Oh, you Brinners ain't so happy now, are ya? The man speaks with a slurred voice as he holds the blade to Will's throat. Oh no, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Oh no. We didn't mean to start a fight with you. <coughs> We're just trying to enjoy a cup before we head south to save a village from troubles. Nebel inches towards the man, calmly and slowly. Will is fully awake now and looks up at the man that holds the knife to his throat. Suddenly there is a loud metal clanging sound from behind the four drunk... The four drunk men. 
One of the men falls to the ground with a thud, and the cook from behind the counter of the tavern stands up with a large metal pan in his hand. No fighting! He spits at the men. Just then, Will quickly glabs his, jabs his thumb into the eye of the man that holds him. He turns and trips the man to the ground, disarming him. Nebula and Linka charge the other two. Trickfoot releases his spell, a blinding ball of light that paralyzes one of the men. Linka and Neville both beat the last man down until he submits, damn it! After it is all said and done, and the elk guards have questioned everyone, it seems that no one was truly hurt. The men will be locked up, and charges pressed on the man who pulled the blade. Your party are all free to go. <laughs> Lovely. The four dust themselves off and mount up on their horses. Neville looks at the other three. Let's ride! They head out of Ashbane and down the old road to Delar. They ride for several days until they come to a wagon parked on the road. There's no draft on Neville under the wagon joke. And it's covered in white canvas. Neville holds up his hand. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a it's a trap. It's a it's a trap. Come out of the fucking wagon. It's a trap. You set him on fire. <laughs> Hit him with an acid bolt. Oh God. Hit him with an acid bolt. Oh, God. Linka flicks her finger, and a slender green bolt of magic strikes the man in the flesh. The acid splatters on the woman, and she screams and falls to the ground. <laughs> Kicking. Oh, oh, God. Neville charges forward on his horse and tramples the man under the horse's hooves. He dies instantly. The two mo more men leap from the back of the wagon. <laughs> from the back of the wagon. Well, Linka, deal with him. The men take off in different directions. Will rides one down and finishes him with a strike from his arm blades. He has arm blades, apparently. Oh, that's an arm blade. It's not really an arm blade. That's more of like a hand slicey thing. Link waves her hand and strikes the second in the back with another magical acid bolt. He falls to the ground, screams, and then dies. The woman is still screaming and rubbing her face because of the splattered acid. Trickfoot, see if you can help her. Trickfoot and Neville strain the, restrain the woman and Trickfoot wipes her face clear of acid. He uses a healing spell and a numbing spell to stop the burning. She's going to be all right. She'll carry these scars forever, but at least she didn't die. Trickfoot informs the party. The woman informs the group that she was on her way to Ashbane. Oh, God. Oh, we're big damn heroes. <laughs> With acid. Good Lord, we're all still healthy somehow. <laughs> oh, my God. Why? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Okay. Grab a torch. Okay. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's get those screaming things up here. Mr. Warrior. Neville hefts his hammer and steps forward. The passage is very narrow for roughly ten meters, and then it opens into a larger room. As Neville eases into the room, the sound of shrill shrieking can be heard. It is so loud that Trickfoot has to cover his sensitive cat-like ears. Not really cat-like, they are cat ears. But whatever. I think he's carrying a torch to the back and he's like, ah. Why do they have such so many slots? There's nothing to carry. Oh no. Neville looks down and beneath his feet are thousands of tiny little green mushrooms. Shrieking mushrooms! He didn't see them and just touching them makes a horrible noise to scare off animals that might eat them. And there he is, stomping them into the ground with his armored boots. Ahead in the cabin, uh, the sound of running soldiers can be heard. Dozens of lizard men flood into the chamber and engage the heroes with halberds and spikes and spears. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Neville brings several down with firm strikes from his hammer, but they quickly overwhelm him. Linklet and Will try to help, but they too fall beneath the spears and pikes carried by the lizardmen. Trickfoot falls back to the exit, but his spells are no match for such a force. He runs for the village, but unfortunately they catch him and kill him as well. Balls. Okay. Okay. Last major decision. Okay. Okay. That was bad. That was really bad. Linka, you lead the way. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. Major decision. Okay. Okay. Will? Ye oh god! What have I done? Uh, Will, go. Please. For the love of god. Okay, take them out. We're going to do this. Will leaps out from behind the stalagmite and throws three daggers. The daggers sink deep into the flesh of the lizard men. The others scream loudly in their language and pick up the weapons and charge. Acid bolts fly from Linka's fingers, and more of the lizard men drop to the ground. They twist and shriek in pain as the acid eats through them. One throws a spear and catches her in the shoulder, though. She falls to the ground. <coughs> oh, god damn it. Neville swings his hammer and wide arc is arches. Arcs. 
Sending scaled bodies flying, again and again he pounds them until all but a few are dead. Too close and unwill, he stabs one of his blades, but before he can pull them free, the second stabs him to the neck with a long spear. Nebel tries to save him, but arrives only in time to kill the last lizard. Will collapses against the cavern wall, dead. God damn it! Trickfoot quickly tends to link his wound, and is able to stop the bleeding and close the wound. But, uh, hang on. The injury is severe, though, and she will need to be careful. Trickfoot checks Will, but he is gone. Meanwhile, Neville digs through the corpses and finds a small bronze key. It looks like it likely be belongs to some prison cuffs. He pockets it. Neville drags Will's body to the side and leaves it behind. The group pushes on. The three continue until they come to a rope bridge. It looks secure enough, and there are no visible traps or anything. A shame the party no longer has a trap expert to investigate. Neville, you go first. <laughs> oh, no. Neville takes the lead and slowly and nervously crosses the rope bridge. There was a massive drop-off below, and if one was to fall, they would surely die a horrible death on the sharp stones below. The others follow distantly behind for fear of putting too much weight on the bridge. E. 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 Oh, God, no. Why would you do this to me? There, someone's going to die. Watch. Just as Trickfoot gets across, back at the mouth of the cave, there's a loud shrieking noise. Someone else must have stepped on the mushrooms. Did someone... F Did someone follow us? I don't know why she said that. Lanka asks. Deeper in the cave, the sound of two, maybe three lizard men running can be heard as well. They likely plan to, to join with their now dead comrades at the mouth, mouth of the cave. They are still unaware of the attack by the heroes. Ambush them. Nebel and Lanka quickly ambush the lizards and make short work of them. The group then heads back to the mouth of the cave. A man decked in heavy armor with red feathers around his helm swings a double-handed blade with skill and precision. Bits and pieces of lizard men paint the cavern walls with every swing he makes. Move in to help his ass. The party flanks the lizards and lends them out a hand. It isn't a long time before none remain left alive. Are you all right? He asks the par to the party. We were about to ask you the same to you, Lincoln answers with a laugh. Who are you? My name is Graven Page. I am a guardian. I was trying to catch up with you. Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at the size of that motherfucker! Oh my god! It's possibly better than having the other thing. He looks down at the mushrooms that gave him away. In my haste, I revealed my position. I was passing through Delar and heard they needed help. They hired a band of mercs to save them for a threat. I came to lend my blade. Well, you're most welcome, Guardian. Guardian, you're most welcome, Guardian. Shikfoot exclaims excitedly. I'm familiar with the Guardians. It's an honor to meet one. The four head back into the depths of the caverns, stepping over the bodies of enemy and friend alike. They finally come to a room with two prison cells. One is empty, but the second houses a burned man. His face and arm and chest is horribly scarred from being scared from being burned. He takes a look at each of you, and then begs to be released. Nebel tries his key on them, and sure enough, it unlocks them. Release his ass! Who are you? Graven asks. I'm just... nobody. They tortured me. They burned me over and over. <coughs> Please, let me go. The man responds. Responses, his hands shaking. Very well. The passage behind us has been cleared. Be careful. Graven waves for the man to leave. And so he does. Poor soul. Trickfoot speaks after the man leaves. Graven pats Trickfoot's shoulder. Do not be fooled. Huh? Trickfoot looks surprised. But his skin? Yes, horribly burned. He did that to himself. Well, his order did. That man was a berserker. They're insane. They burned themselves to release their rage and anger. To make their soul able to house the spirit's ferocity. Graven shakes his head his face painted with judgment. I've heard of them, Lanka asks. Graven nods. Yes, they're fools, but what they do not do to themselves but what they do to themselves is of their own concern. I did not come here to hunt berserkers. Let us push on. The party reaches the next room. After cutting through a long and narrow passage, it is filled with crates and weapon racks and barrels and bookshelves, but most importantly, a giant wooden door stands there with iron and steel rivets. This door is one thing, and that one thing is reinforced. It looks as if it locks from the other side as well. 
Whoever put this here did not want anyone getting through. Knock it down! Neville and Gavin take turns bashing the door, but before they can finish it, it flies off the hinges and clatters to the ground. A massive lizardman charges out, roaring and swinging a two-handed axe wildly. In a flash, Gavin turns and meets the massive beast head to head. The beast swings its heavy axe, and he leans into it. His armor stops the blow. Everything seems to be fine. Neville cracks the beast across the knee, and it falls to one leg. Linka sprays it in the eyes. God, Linka, please stop. <laughs> sprays it in the eyes with an acid bolt, and Graven quickly runs his blade down its roaring throat. Blood sprays onto his armor, head beads, and runs off of it. Graven puts a blade-covered foot on the beast's muzzle and pries his blade free. Good work. Let us move on. In this massive chamber, the party can hear the dull hum of an infinite number of giant locusts. Overhead, large colonies of the insects hang. Right now they're asleep, or at least resting. This is where he must be breeding them. It's fine. Let's continue. Graven points and leads the group. At the far end of the cavern, there is a fine-looking door made of nice wood and a poli with a polished knob. Graven sends the dwarf flying with one swift kick from his boot. We have come for you, he shouts at the as the party follows him in. Inside, a man quickly leaps from his desk and grabs a curved sword from a wall rack. He turns and spins the blade skillfully. This is the mastermind. Before anyone can act, Graven charges him, and the two engage in combat. It isn't long before Graven forces him down and kills him with a swift thrust. The others never even had a chance to help. Graven stands over him, and then calmly starts to wipe his blade free of the blood. There is still much to do. Graven turns back to the others. We will need to remove those locusts and round up any remaining lizards and put, and put to the blade. And I suppose you all have to be paid. Nebel frowns at the last bit. Well, good luck and well, good day and good luck. Today we did a good thing. Graven throws his sword onto his back and slowly walks out of the room, his shoulders swinging, larger than life. A hundred and ninety-four out of what? <laughs> I don't know how many there are. Why would you give me so many options, please? Oh God! One more major decision. <laughs> okay, Will leads. Of course, take them out. He dies. W go first. Okay, hide and let the lizards pass. Okay, the three heroes duck and hide. The lizard men run out of the corridor across the rope bridge. These three lizard men carry swords and shields, likely captains in the lizard ranks. Nebel stands after they pass and vanish from sight. He whispers, <gasps> "Let's keep going," and heads down the corridor deeper into the cavern. The other two follow. The next room is carved out a, is carved out a bit. It's almost square in the shape and has obviously been worked with a mason's tools. A fire burns in the center of this room, and several cooking pots and shelves are here. Some food and herbs hang on the large wooden racks from the wall, and a couple of worn-looking weapons and tools lay in the corner. There are a few chairs and two prisoner cages. One of them holds a being of some type, though they're covered in a blanket of some kind. Oh my God! Here's the key to open the cage. The cage door opens easily, and the figure stirs. <coughs> it is a man with a horribly scored, scarred face. He looks as if he has been burned, but his eyes are strong and without fear. Who are you? He asks as he pushes his way out of the cage. We're looking for a man, the leader of these is lizardmen, likely. Trickfoot informs the new face. You want him dead? Asks the scarred man. He begins digging in the crates and tools nearby. Nubble responds. Um, Nebel responds. Possibly. He's holding a nearby town ransom, using locusts to attack their food. <clears throat> the man nods to Nebel. Yes, he has been doing that. He's breeding them. Deeper in the cave. And these lizards are his lackeys. Simple-minded and easily swayed. The man stops and pulls some clothing and a red mask from the crates. He throws his rags aside and changes clothes in front of everyone. His neck, part of his chest, and one arm also are horribly scarred. The man, now wearing the mask, looks to Nebel and Linka. Can I come with you? I wish to kill this man. He has kept me prisoner for some time, and I would like to return the favor. You may, Trickfoot says from behind the man. He turns and meets Trickfoot's gaze. Thank you. He gives a small bow to Trickfoot. My name is Harmer. This man I want dead. He breeds the locusts deeper in, 
and then uses smoke and fire to drive them out. They feed all night and return in late morning. We will find both him and the hive this way. He points down a carved hole and down some steps built into the cavern floor. Wow. Jesus Christ. Dude. Seriously, he has two weapons. He's a berserker, obviously. Named Harmer. He harms. Neville grins. The bastard isn't using magic at all. Let's go finish this. Neville leads the way down to the stone steps, deeper into the caverns. The stairs lead down into a large chamber. Here there is a large wooden door with reinforced metal studs and steel bands. This door will not come down quietly, and there is doubt, no doubt locked from the other side. There are also some boxes in one corner of the room, and a rack of weapons on the opposite wall. Several large hammers, mauls, and two-handed swords hang on the rack. There is also a large silver chest. <laughs> Open the fancy one. Oh my god! Neville opens the silver chest. He is surprised by a loud clicking noise and then a massive explosion that kills everyone in the room. It was trapped. Fuck. <laughs> oh, of course it was. Open the cage. Yes, yes, of course. We understand. Oh, God, what have I done? Oh, the four dig through the crates in the room. Harmer leans up suddenly, four sticks of dynamite in hands. I found a thing! <laughs> he announces to the room. Fantastic, let's use them to blow this door down. Neville takes the explosives and places them around the reinforced door. He then lights them, and the group takes some cover. Takes cover. There's a massive explosion, and the smoke and dust fills the cavern. A large, sturdy figure can be seen standing in the now open doorway. Neville eases forward to get a better look, and a giant lizardman, Dragonkins, falls forward and smashes into the ground. Dead. Pieces of the door protrude from his body. <laughs> oh god, I blew him up with the door. <laughs> Harmer leans over the bloody corpse. Glad we didn't have to fight that thing. Neville nods. I've never seen the lizard folk that size before. Giant insects, giant lizardmen, tricklefoot ants. <laughs> poking the lizard poking the lizard with his cane. Linka shakes her head at the sight. Let's move on. The passage once again the passage once again becomes a winding and twisting and cuts through the rock like an empty river. Then a massive opening appears, and once inside the party sees countless eggs and locusts all resting on the ceiling and upper walls. The hum of gentle clicking as the locust as the locust's idol fills the enclosed hall. This is the breeding room. Oh no. Locusts everywhere. And larva. This is nasty. Guess we found the hive, Neville says, while staring up at the site. I don't think the insects will be a problem on their own. See that wood over there? Harmer points to the stacks of half burnt lumber on the opposite side. They burn those to drive them into a frenzy. All right, we'll keep that in mind. We must be closing in on the leader, though, correct? Trickfoot asks to the asks to Harmer. Yes, no doubt. Likely just in the next room. Keep in mind, he's a skilled swordsman, and he might not be alone. Harmer responds. The others nod in understanding. My nose is getting blocked. This is the last ending I'll do. At the end of the hall, there is another wooden door. This one is less heavy-duty than the previous door, and has a nice polished handle. Hummer charges forward without warning and kicks the door open, and he draws both of his short blades and charges in. Inside, a man in a long cloak waits, his sword already drawn. He meets Harmer in battle. Oh no. I am the son of Tratlin, master swordsman of Haverune. Tonight you fools meet your deaths. The man swings a large curved sword with speed and grace. He holds off both Harmer and Neville, but it is clear he is getting winded fast. Lenka moves into position and nails him right in the thigh with an acid bolt. God damn. Good lord. He goes down and Harmer wastes no time parting his head from his body. Harmer roars and blood sprays into the air. It is somewhat shocking. Standing there, Harmer breathes hard and looks to the others. It is done. He has killed and is no more. He has been killed. Your job is finished, as is mine. Trickfoot uh, nods. We shall return to town and inform them. You have succeeded. Your score is higher. Yay. Thank you so much for watching. You get to go find the other endings if there are any more by yourself. Go have fun. I think there are more. Hang on. Give me a sec. Um, I, I got all the achievements. Uh, except for one. Like, that.